Okay, also here's project number one riding mower. This is the um, opposed twin one with the 19 and a half turbo cooled um, Briggs on it. 42 inch cut, is, like I've mentioned in the previous video, it's missing the little cover there. Um, I think I'm going to end up putting the bagger on this one that I have because I do not use the bagger here at the house because of all the pine straw, it just clogs everything up. Uh, in that particular bagger and I use my snapper for it. So quick overview. I put a pretty air filter pretty new on it. The battery is basically new. Um, so far I've aired up the front tires. The back tires are okay. The oil was a little low. I think I've actually may have overfilled it a little bit but um, when I checked it just a minute ago, it was okay. Um, what else here? I don't think there's nothing much else. I found a key to use, and so we're going to um, use that to get it going. Um, it wouldn't stop whenever he put it in the off position last time, so we'll see if it does it um, this time, although he was using a screwdriver. So let me crank this thing up hopefully it'll run well and run on no choke so we'll find out cable isn't working but I think it's just out of adjustment. You want to go for a ride? Let's do it. Yeah you can tell the governor's off or something like that because it's cycling up and down a little bit. It's rolling pretty good though. And it's currently, it currently has no choke on. That's the choke. That's no choke. Let's throw on some blades. You can tell there's something wrong. It's not necessarily the governor, it's just, I think the throttle's out of adjustment. So we're gonna work on that. You can hear it bog down like crazy right there. Should be running a lot better on load. I love these hydrostatic transmissions though, they're really nice.
see if I can get it to turn off now. So we'll have to sort that out too, but that shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, I just need to clean the terminals on the ignition switch. Um, so it looks like I have to figure out why the throttle is not working right and also why the governor is not working right. And um, why it's not turning off when I hit the switch. So. Those are the, uh, I guess, the next things to sort out, and um, we'll get started on it. So I found something interesting here on the front of the mower. There is a actually a disconnected, looks like because it's black, it's going to the coil, a disconnected grounding cable. To what it goes to, I am not sure. Let me tr let me see if I can trace it. It goes into this device right here. Actually, goes into that plug. There's a black plug that goes over here, and it runs over to the key switch. So that is very possible that the that this wire here is the um, kill wire for the ignition switch. If that's the case, that's a really easy fix. So let me see if I can grab this to where I can get it. And obviously I'm going to make a better connection with this. I've got some wiring, um, <laughs> a little small wire set um, to fix this with. But let me actually just for a preliminary run. That exhaust is kind of hot. Let me sit y'all on the wheel there. Actually, the wheel will is gonna move on this. Gotta love a gotta love an axle on a lawnmower. I got it jacked up with a floor jack because silly me decided I'm never gonna work on riding mowers anymore, so I sold my riding mower jack. Got tired of looking at it because I hadn't used it in five years. And guess what? Now would be a good time to have it, huh? That's connected good enough. Let me lower the jack, crank it up, and see if that will actually do what we need to do. first place. Didn't get it on camera, but let me show y'all. That's exactly what I want. Excellent. Plus, the motor's running with no choke on. It's just something with the governor's screwed up with it. And I know it's not the... Um, 
the internal portion of the governor, otherwise this thing will be revving way too high. Um, so that's half the battle. Let me find, I don't think my wiring devices are out here. Let me go get some wiring kit, fix this up to where it's a permanent fixture, so to speak, so that it doesn't move around. But hey, there's half of the battle right there for what we need to do, right? So very happy with that. Let's uh, start working on the governor, which is down there, which might be a little, it might not be that much, that bad. I just think it's disconnected. I just think it's out way too far, honestly. So, oh well, uh, we'll tackle this next. So that looks a little bit better. <laughs> Promise it works better than it looks. Hidden under all that electrical tape is one of these. Stuck both sides of the wire in, crimped it with uh, one of these crimpers right here. And, uh, Gave it the uh, tug test, so to speak, just to make sure, and uh, wrapped it in electrical tape, and we have now fixed the um, ignition switch. So now let's move on to the governor. Well, if y'all follow uh, me doing push mowers, especially those classic style brigs, you know that the bolts that hold on the air cleaner covers are... Um, not fun whenever you are missing one and luckily that's not the case with these air filter covers here i was missing the bolt for that i was able to look into my stash of bolts which i try and organize into different types and you know lengths and sizes and whatnot loosely just so i could grab one and you know get it out kind of quick so found one luckily Pop it on here, give me a 10 mil, tighten it up, we'll be in good shape, in good shape, excuse me. Um, so again, onward to the uh, awesome governor and whatnot now. So let's, uh, let's try and work on that some. So I promise I won't get to the governor, I just keep learning of little tips and tricks that you can do, or that I'm doing here just to free things up, like the choke, the choke y'all probably saw was a little bit on the um not the stuck side but y'all know what i'm trying to say here it was a little bit uh a little bit difficult to pull in and out so i actually threw some lubricant on it works a whole lot better now um next up i'm gonna do that to the throttle mechanism just gonna spray a little bit of lubricant right there on the uh pivot point of the mechanism there just to uh, never hurts to have that stuff loosened up you know you can pop it back here on the back as well if you want to go ahead and cover it all spray it in the cable too if you'd like but now where I had a, a choke cable that wouldn't pull in and push out or push in and pull out all the way. I've got one that will relatively easy considering this is a 20 plus year old mower. Throttle, even easier to work than it was. So that's a good thing. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of research on the governor just to see if I'm hitting in the right ballpark real quick. And then I'll come back out here and we'll continue. I think that spring right there and that bolt have something to do with it as it's attached to the governor spring down there. So we will see what that has to do with it and we will get back at it. And I've got a rather large bug flying in here so if you hear that buzzing that's that. All right. Um, after a little bit of uh, YouTube research from multiple uh, videos. I figured out that if you see this spring right here associated with the between the throttle cable and then the linkage over to the governor, that screw right there, 
that has the spring on it right there with the little star bit. I see the spring is compressed all the way on it in this little slider mechanism. This one right here is not. Now, I know that the internal governor of the mower is good because it's not revving up at an ungodly RPM, which led me to think there's one of two things going on here, and I figured that one of them is not. The um, throttle cable um, adjustment, or the throttle adjustment screw, which I believe is on this side of the motor, because it's right here, right? Because if it were the throttle adjustment screw, let me see if I can do this with two hands here, then this would actually be in the way, and I wouldn't be able to actually physically move the throttle up and down all the way back here. So, but as you can see, I can do that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find a star bit and I am going to um, tighten that down, that spring there. Sorry, it's not really the best angle I can get to it. And um, we're going to do that. So let me see if I can get it in a good position. There we go. Get in a good position to do the star bit. So I put the throttle all the way down. That'll give me clean access on the um, right side of the mower. So let's do that. Okay, so I got a little light. Hopefully that's helping and not hurting. It's a T15 bit. And this actually is like a little slider. And so I'm just going to actually tighten it down all the way. For some, some reason, I guess over time, or maybe it wasn't running right, who knows. The thing got loosened. So we are going to tighten it down. I believe it's supposed to go down all the way to compress the spring, so we got a little ways to go here. Nice little ways. Let's try that. All right. Let's see if that makes any difference here. And what that does is that actually allows the governor spring in the back here. It's a tensioner for the governor spring. So now you see the governor spring is tight. And whenever I had it loose, this governor spring was still loose. And so that should allow the governor to enact. And for the, like I said, the throttle cable was running well, or was the, let me try that again, the speed of the engine was adequate right so let me grab because i need to i need to tighten up these engine cover stuff too that's just a few bolts i'll get that in a second let me get it out into the um so i don't mess anything up just in case it screwed something up uh, out into the driveway and we'll uh we'll test it out see if the governor and the throttle is working like it's supposed to now all right, out in the daylight, so we'll set it down here. Let's see what we got.
Okay, so I think I went a little bit on the um, fast side, just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to back that out a little bit. I see the deal with it only running on the choke as well now. So that makes sense in the fact that he actually tried to um, get it to where it would run by backing out that governor screw. Obviously that's not acceptable for me to use or sell like that. So let me back it out a little bit on the uh, star bit and we will... Um, I'm going to continue testing and I think the next step is going for me going to be for me to get into the carburetor. I might let it run a little bit with some sea foam just to see if that will help matters any. Um, it's got almost a full tank of gas in it so I got quite a bit. All right, so let me continue to work. I'm going to dress up some of this as well just so it's not you know tearing up the engine cover as much. Okay, so we are getting closer, which is a good thing. Um, it's still idling a little high, so this guy actually did end up putting, end up backing or pushing in the idle screw some. It'll run actually with no choke on um, at idle, and then as soon as you speed it up, it's actually the choke is calling for more fuel and it's not getting any. So the idle screw is right here. I'm going to adjust that out. I'm going to actually let y'all hear it first, and then I'm going to adjust it out. So let me grab. If y'all don't mind taking a walk with me, grab a screwdriver. And I got the park brake on and everything so it'll run without um, that. Um, the blade safety switch works because it took me a few seconds to figure out I had that on whenever I tried to turn the mower back on. But there's the screw. So let me crank the mower up. you want to hear it at, at idle right there so this guy was trying to gerrymander this thing let's pull the throttle up now i think i'm still a little on the fast side So, I mean, slowly getting better here. It idles great, by the way. It's just not calling for enough gas for whatever reason on full throttle. But I guess slowly undoing other people's wrongdoing, so to speak, right? Um, we are probably 80% of the way there with the um, idle, with the um, idle screw. The governor screw, which I'm going to back out a little bit more because it's still on the uh, fast side. So I'm going to back that out a little bit more. I'm going to keep testing. When I get it right, I'll let you know. So it didn't get any better the more that I ran it. And the reason why I think it is because I think there's some water in the carburetor. I don't know if the light will be able to pick it up down there. But I see a couple of droplets of condensation. In the intake tube there and I have a feeling that since this thing has set outside for a decent amount of its life that it does have some water in the bowl of the carburetor which it has been a long time since I've taken apart one of these opposed twin carbs so we're about to we're about to go nuts with it right five sixteenths inch nut or bolt here Take these three off. I think there's a way to do this without actually having to.
take this off. We'll at least start there, the intake tube. Let me put y'all over here real quick. All right. And then you just pull off the intake tube right here. The motor is hot, be careful. You don't want any hot exhaust burns like I have on my uh, hand right there. So that was from about a year ago with the snapper. But the same issue with water and fuel. Honestly, I'm actually, well, I didn't realize this thing has a mixture screw on it, it looks like. You see that right there, y'all? A mixture screw. I'm actually somewhat tempted to um, try that mixture screw and see if that does anything really quick before I finish tearing this off. But uh, if I remember correctly, the jet actually uh, the jet might actually be right here for this so i don't have to actually take this off unless there's water in the fuel and then that's a different story so let me do a little bit more troubleshooting and um if i have any findings i'll definitely get back okay so i guess a quick and dirty way to get to inside the carburetor because that is the, actually the jet down there i believe or at least a screw to access the bottom part of the carburetor um, somebody correct me if this is not the jet. It's not, at least obviously not, in the screw like it is on uh, other Briggs devices. But if you look in there, you see there's a hole. And it's actually kind of corroded. I don't know if we can see it very well right there, right? So let me... We might have to end up taking the carburetor off of this thing to clean it, but... Honestly, that won't be that big of a deal if we have to. Could just take either the intake off or just take these four bolts off right here uh, to get lift the carburetor up. But what I'm going to try first off just to make sure that it's not any water or anything in the fuel is I'm actually going to throw some compressed air down there. Watch your eyes when you do this. Had a little bit of corrosion I can see come out of the jet, but you know. That's going to happen right there. Um, I think we could actually let's see I'm actually gonna see if that does anything to be honest with you I'm trying to avoid having to actually you know get down into this motor any so let me see I'll put this screw back on. Pinch off your gas line while you're doing this. I'm eventually going to add a fuel shutoff switch, which I always do to all the riding mowers that I fix around here. Just out of an abundance of caution. And it never hurts because they're only about a dollar a piece. So let's let this fill back up. Got a ton of gas in this mower, so I'm not really concerned about that. Hopefully it's good gas. Sometimes this works on push mower, so I'm going to try the rider first here and see if that helps. Should be enough gas in there at this point, right? There's some choke action on it. don't like that does it I have to give this battery a little bit of a charge or a little bit of a boost to get this thing going again
Yep, I'm going to have to do that. So, good news is I got it running. I'll show you that in a second, running correctly. Uh, I want to show you all that the hood, I have it. I haven't had it on the mower because I needed to do a little repair to it. It's a little messed up. As you can see, there's supposed to be plastic pieces right here that anchor it to the, um, anchor, I guess, the front part to the hood piece itself as well as anchor it to the mower like you slide it in and out. Um, did not, the, this side's broken, so I ended up putting a second one of these bolts in to help secure it a little bit better. Still not perfect. It will uh, get the job done, to, though, just to hold the hood on. Um, and I've reached into my bolt pile also to get sit I don't I don't it's missing something over here and I don't know exactly what it's missing it may be like one of those um shrouds or something like that that it's missing I don't have it um but the other six bolts that were not a part of the cover that was just allowing it to just kind of hang on I put six bolts in uh from my bolt stash in order to secure the cover down so it's not going to go anywhere which also helps secure the um, dip stick down and one thing to note real quick there are no leaks on this mower at all just maybe because you've got we well, got a secondary oil plug right here but that's kind of customary there's really no leaks on this thing at all i'm super surprised and it's got the good style um oil drain on it as well Oop, I may lie, there may be just a small oil leak right down here. But um, to consider it over 20 years old, pretty darn good for what it is. Um, very clean. You sometimes see like oil just caked all over these things just from use and abuse. But this one really hasn't been abused very much just apart from where the deck got hit. So let me um, put the hood on. It just slides right in. Uh, before I put... Actually, I'll go ahead and put all this back on, and I'll give you all a start and end this part of the video. So I got the hood back on. Um, it doesn't fit perfectly, but it does open and close like it should. Um, if I can show you all real quick, actually, what I had to do to get the... Um, let me put this down real quick. To get it running correctly... I actually had to get into the fuel pump because what I did after I blew compressed air into the um, into the jet is I think it might have clogged up something in the fuel pump to where it wasn't allowing the fuel to get um, into the carburetor. So what I actually had to do is take off these three quarter inch screws and there was just a little gunk in there. I just cleaned out the gunk, put, excuse me, put the gaskets back on and... Um, uh, after a few turns, once it got some fuel up in there, it actually cranked up and is running like it's supposed to. So hopefully it doesn't make a liar out of me now. I'm going to put the hood back on and we're going to crank it up go for a ride. run so smooth even at low rpm
So just let me know what y'all think. Y'all think it's running a little fast? I think it's right kind of on the threshold. Um, sounds great though when it's running. The hood is uh, unfortunately a little bit loose. That's just going to be a product of where it's broken out on the plastic. Um, it's not intersecting or hurting anything. So I'm going to leave this uh, to an end here for part one. There will be a part two on this mower. It's just going to be a little bit of cutting, a little bit of cleaning. And I've got to make sure, I've got to grease up the um, fittings here for the steering so it steers a little bit easier because it's mechanical steering. If you don't take care of it, it really gets loose over time. This is actually pretty good compared to the personal mower that I use. Just make sure the tires stay up. Put a uh, cover on it, sharpen the blades, although the blades are relatively sharp as it is. I'm going to sharpen them. So that's going to be in part two, which will be coming up. Uh obviously in another video so thank you all for watching i'm glad hopefully this is helping some folks who figured out that their governor and stuff is all screwed up and their um and all that good stuff so um thank you all for watching part two's coming up